Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And I hope everyone is enjoying this beautiful Monday morning. It's Labor Day. Are you guys planning any barbecues? Are you going to the beach? You know, how are you going to spend the day or do you have to work? I don't know about where you guys live at, but where I live, I keep forgetting that there is a pandemic going on because people just go on about their business as usual. The schools reopened a couple of weeks ago. I was out walking and couldn't believe that little kids was going to school. I thought the kids were doing virtual school. And then I went downtown. I had to stop by USF, which is my alma mater, to pick up something from the bookstore. Walked in the store, everybody looking at me like, where your mask at? I'm like, God dang it, I run back out to the car, get my mask. And then I went somewhere else and I think I went to pick up some food and had to run back to the car and pick up my mask. So y'all pray for me, okay? Because <laughs> um, I don't know, it's just, everything just seems normal around me that I keep forgetting that we are under this pandemic. But anyway, I'm here to talk to you guys today about the verses last night. Nobody told me that it was going to be Cardi B versus Candace Owens. <laughs> I logged on to Twitter and Twitter was on fire last night with this Candace and Cardi B beef going on. So if you haven't heard about it already, Cardi B was interviewed by Joe Biden. And it wasn't a bad interview. It was a typical pandering for the black vote type of interview. I felt that Cardi B held her own. I mean, Cardi B is Cardi B. You know, she stated that she wanted, um, you know, she obviously has like a socialist mindset where she wants everything free. She wants free education, free health care, free child care, you know, of course, like all the rest of us, we need police reform, you know, as far as, you know, police shooting unarmed people and not going to jail, not being charged for it, not having to justify their actions. But Joe Biden, I don't know, the, the interview for me was a little awkward because, you know, Cardi, they weren't in the same room, they were doing it via Zoom. And you could tell that there was a lot of editing going on, but it was like two people having two totally different conversations. Like maybe Cardi Express, you know, was given a list of questions and she did her portion. And then Joe was responding to the questions. It just didn't feel like they were having a natural conversation with one another. And so she, you know, was basically saying that she's tired of the racism. She doesn't care who is president as long as it's not Donald Trump. And I think a lot of people feel that same way. And then, of course, you know, she talked about the free health care, free education, free child care. You know, the fact that her mom is able to watch her kids. But for so many low income families, you know, the grandmothers are still working. You know, people are working, you know, into their 60s and 70s and 80s. People are dying, you know with a job where it used to didn't be that way. And so she was saying how, you know, people are working for low wages, they can't afford childcare, and so it's just a vicious cycle. And then Joe Biden, on the other hand, wasn't really listening to nothing Cardi was saying. Like everything he was saying was sort of, it was like a, you know, political speech. You know, he was just basically get out the black vote, you know, you have a huge following, you know, you can impact the millennial vote by telling your followers to vote. And, you know, he asked her what were her followers saying to her that they want in a president. And we know good and well Cardi B fans are not talking to her about politics. They talking about how much they love WAP. And so it was just kind of pretentious. You know, it just, for me, I felt Cardi held her own Joe was just being Joe, being a politician. So in comes, oh, and then one thing I want to say about him, you know, talking about that millennial vote, millennials do have an opportunity to change politics. Let's be very clear about that. But what Joe Biden and the Democrats are missing 
is that millennials are saying we are tired we are tired of your bs and if we have to hold our vote hostage that's what we're going to do and if that means that there's going to be four more years of donald trump then there's going to be four more years of donald trump but if the democratic party wants to continue getting the black vote the democratic party needs to work for the black vote now of course this isn't all millennials this isn't you know an all-inclusive thing just like all black people are not democrats you know all racist well all races probably are trump supporters but not all trump supporters are racist so there are people on both sides that have different opinions and so you know for them to believe that cardi b because she has these millions upon millions upon millions of followers can somehow impact the millennial vote without actually being in front of the millennials and talking to millennials about issues and explaining to them the importance of voting and why they need to continue to vote for democrats when democrats have repeatedly shown us time after time after time after time that there is no true black agenda that they'll talk about a black agenda to get the black vote but they won't actually implement laws or make changes and i noticed that every election season you know to get the black vote they start talking about you know these socialist parties about free education free you know health care and all of this stuff but it never happens and the reason it never happens is because who is going to pay for all this free stuff but working americans and the taxpayers and they try to say that they're going to tax the you know the jeff bezos of the world you know these billionaires and you know people with all this money that they're going to increase their taxes to pay for all this stuff but trust and believe everybody taxes would be impacted in order for them to do all these things that they want to do so in comes candace owens and so candace owens was interviewed by this guy named ben shapiro and you know they are you know right-wing conservatives they are Republicans, they support Trump and his BS. And so Candace, what gets it from with me with Candace is, Candace is a bright person. You know, I don't have a problem with anybody believing in what they believe in, supporting what they support, because diversity makes the world go round. But Candace is so condescending and she is so negative and she just, you know, she just come in punching at the throat, right? And so in her saying, you know, that she didn't like the interview between Cardi and Joe Biden, she couldn't just say, you know, I'm tired of politicians pandering to people that are not really politically savvy. She came in and said that Cardi B was uneducated, that Cardi B was illiterate. You know, she didn't know what she's talking about. And I'm like, girl, you just lost your whole message. Why can't you just say, you know, I don't think that politicians should be getting people to talk about politics just because they have a huge following because it's not a real discussion she comes in you know calling the girl names and when cardi b replied back to her via instagram you could tell that cardi b was hurt like she didn't show her face on the camera you just saw her hand like going across looked like it might have been like a a blanket or a knitted shawl or something to tell that she didn't really have the enthusiasm in her voice and that you know you know how you you know that you come from a good place you have a good heart and you're trying to do something good but it's never good enough for some people that's kind of how cardi b sounded when she responded and then of course that just fueled candace because then she had to come back and do her own video you know pretty much downing cardi b and reiterating you know what she had said before and then she has a book out i think the book is called black out and she was like you know i've autographed all my books they're going in the mail and i have one more book that i'm going to autograph and send out you know and she says that the book is to cardi b and then they got into this debate about wap 
And, you know, Candace was saying that, oh, because in Cardi B's response, she was talking about how she's number one in these different countries because of WAP. You know, she's the number one rap singer and she's won awards for her rap. And, you know, Candace was basically shooting that down like, you're not Joe Biden didn't talk to you because of your son her your song he talked to you because of your following he doesn't care anything about WAP and then Cardi B came back with a, a tweet basically Candace Owens is expecting I think she's like six months pregnant and Cardi B said something about her dry ass coochie okay and then Candace Owens came back you know with something on that and so for me it was just sad to see you know, the internet on fire because of two black women going at each other. And so this was a statement that Cardi B said in response to Candace. She said, why wouldn't Joe Biden sit down with me? I have millions of followers and I pay millions in taxes. I'm heard all around the world. The same way I get people to pop their pussy and have a good time and make them feel like a bad bitch. I can also encourage millions of followers to go out and vote. And so while she had remained silent about the internet, hey, Cardi said things came to a head when her sister Hennessy and her sister's girlfriend were harassed by Trump supporters in the Hamptons during the Labor Day holiday weekend. And that was a video that was trending. And I had seen the video and didn't even know that it was Cardi B's sister. Somebody had shared it on Facebook. And then as I was researching for this video, I realized that that was Cardi B's sister. And so she says, you want to call me a dumb bitch. You want to call me illiterate girl. You're getting pimped by white men. You have been the man's cheerleader. You're a beautiful black woman. You talk great, amazing. And this man didn't have the decency to let you talk at the Republican convention. And then Cardi B also pointed out that Trump had the Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron speak at the RNC despite not yet making any announcement about the police shooting of Breonna Taylor, who was shot in her home on March 13th. And then she turned her attention back to Owens and said, I don't know what black man broke your heart and you hate your kind so much. And then she went on to vow, you know, that she was going to get her millions of followers to vote in the upcoming election. And despite Republicans and conservative voices like Owens, who rather that she stay silent. And so my thing with Candace Owens, which I already said, she's so condescending and she just go so low when she's responding because you guys remember she had the statements that she put out about George Floyd, um, you know, and a lot of things that Candace said, they're factual. Like the things she said about George Floyd were factual, but they were totally irrelevant to the fact that a police officer put his knee on George Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And so she'll just come out just nasty, you know, just, I don't know, just like I say, trying to punch people in the throat to render them speechless, I guess is her point. Depending on what side of the fence you're on, of course, the liberal media and a lot of the entertainment bloggers are definitely pro Cardi B. They're going hard for Car Cardi B. And then the conservative media and conservative bloggers are dogging Cardi B and supporting Candace. And you can just see the divide on social media and comments, you know, that people are making. And then here are a couple of, you know, social media posts that went up. Let me see here. So one, um, Cardi B said, you want to know why Joe got to talk to me, Candace, because I have the number one song and yet my sister can't go to the beach in the Hamptons without Trump supporters harassing because they were them because they were by themselves and Santa Claus was harassing my sis girlfriend. All people, they are a all because they are a Afro Hispanic gay couple. And then Candace Owens replied, 
to clarify, Joe Biden got to talk and then she got got to talk in parentheses um, to you because you have the number one song and Santa Claus was harassing your sister. Um, okay, thanks for clearing that one up. Candace Owens said, um, number one, your tax dollars already go to free education genius. Number two, no campaign uses tax dollars for funding. That is illegal. Three, defunding police initiatives have led to 200% increases in black men getting shot in inner cities. Stop supporting black people dying. And that was in response to Cardi B saying, well, paying taxes is someone that as much as I hate is a re it's a reality, I will always have to pay, but I'd rather my tax money go to free education than police funding. Use my money on something useful. Your president um, use our money. And then that part of the tweet was cut off. I have to go back and find that tweet to finish what she was saying. There was another part in the Joe Biden Cardi B interview. So Candace, you know, repeatedly said that Cardi was uneducated. She was illiterate. But in that interview, Cardi actually talks about um, going to school and then going to college and how hard it was and how difficult it was for her to go to college because she didn't have money and she had to pay, you know, like $5 each way to get to school, you know, to take the transit system to get to the school. And then she was there all day, which meant that she needed money to eat and how she had to get a part-time job. And so just to pay for food to eat and pay for transit. And then she got to the point where she would come home and she wouldn't get home until late at night, like nine, 10 o'clock at night. And she would be so hungry because she didn't have money to pay for food. And just, you know, pointing out how it was a vicious cycle, you know, for low income and poverty stricken people to get ahead in life. And I thought that was a good point that she had made. And so whether she graduated from college or not, at least she was one smart enough to get into college and two, she actually wanted to try and do better. And then I don't think I found the tweet I was looking for, but in one of the tweets that Candace Owens made, she told um, Cardi B, you know, statistically, she is more, you know, you're talking about defunding the police, but statistically, as a black woman or a woman of color, you are more likely to be killed by your spouse than you are to be killed by police. And, you know, that's another one of those things that technically it is true. Statistically, it is true. Um, black women, I think in America, like 7,000 women are killed each year by domestic partners. And I believe like 1,500 of them might be African-American women. So when she put these facts out there, you know, she is truthful in the facts and the stats that she's putting out there. It's just her delivery and the way she said it because a lot of people took that to mean that she was saying that offset was violent that he was a criminal but in reality what she was saying in that statement is that statistically a black woman stands a greater chance of being killed by her domestic partner whether it's a husband boyfriend whatever than you know she would being killed by the police and if you defund the police and you have less police officers then those stats are going to increase, not decrease. So some of the back and forth included Cardi B saying, your baby singing wop, 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 this some dry ass pussy, and then had a lot of laugh emojis. And then Candy o Candace Owens replying, attacking an unborn child, how very Democrat of you. While I have you, did you know your party has supported the slaughter of over 18 million black babies since 1973, did you know the most unsafe place for a black child is in its mother's womb because of your party? And then she has your in capital letters. Um, Candace tweeted, 
Since most black people didn't have the spine to admit that Ben Shapiro was 100% correct about I am Cardi B and how her music and platform contributes to the disintegration of black culture and values. Here you go, hashtag WAP, hashtag Sunday special. And I believe that might have been what got it all started. Another post, she says, I'm almost six months pregnant and had to rip at am Cardi B a new WAP. Watch here. And then she has the link to her IG video that she did. And then she says, good night, fam. Um, and another tweet, um, Cardi said, I'm going, I'm doing a video on my IG in a minute. I want you guys to listen. Candace replied, update, Cardi B is in the middle of a live Instagram about me, riveting educational content about how she has so many followers. So that's why Joe Biden has to speak to her. She has unfortunately spelled my handle wrong, but people are helping her out in the comments. And then Cardi, then she retweeted Cardi saying, I'm doing a video on my IG in a minute. And then Candace replied, I'll be doing a video on my IG as well in a minute. I want you guys to listen. And then of course she responded to Cardi B's IG. And I believe both of the videos are still up if you guys want to go and check that out. And then um, there was another tweet that Candace, well, let me see what Cardi said first. So Cardi said, well, paying taxes is something that as much as I hate is a reality. I will always have to pay, but I rather my tax money go to free education than police funding, use my money. So something useful on something useful, your president use our tax money to fund his empty campaign runs. And then she has the laugh emojis. And then Candace replied, one, your tax dollars already go to free education genius. Two, no campaign uses tax dollars for funding that is illegal. Three, defunding police initiatives have led to 200% increases in black men getting shot in inner cities. Stop supporting black people dying. And then of course, you know, there are a lot of people who chimed in, someone said, Candace is pointless debating someone who gets their information from the TV. Uh, Candace Owens feuding with Cardi B and I thought 2020 couldn't get any worse. I am Cardi B, can't even write a properly punctuated sentence, but she thinks she has some knowledge to drop. Is that what we have become? Lord help us. And you know, the people were really, you know, kind of mean-spirited towards Cardi B. Um, someone wrote, Cardi ain't ready for this conversation. And a lot of these comments were coming from black people. And this is what I'm talking about. Like there's a lot of black people, you know, the people that were defending Cardi were mainly coming out, you know, calling Candace names, calling her a sellout. They didn't really have strong points to counter what Candace was saying and of course that just continues to fuel Candace and you know it just speaks to the fact that there are a lot of black people that are you know tuning out from the Democratic Party rhetoric and let me go back up here and see I thought there was another post that Candace did but it was just basically you know, a lot of back and forth. And like I said, Cardi, I thought Cardi held her own. She did what she was supposed to do in that Joe Biden interview. It was just my perspective that it looked like it was like they weren't talking to each other. It's to me, it sounded like Cardi was sent some questions. She made a video. The video was sent to Joe Biden. He watched the video and then he just went with his canned democratic responses. I really hate to see black women bickering and fighting like this. And, you know, like I told my daughter, I'm not a political person. I can, you know, we at the family barbecue today and politics come up. I can hold my own in that conversation, but because politics is not my thing, it's not my passion. I'm not going to get in a debate 
with somebody who is passionate about politics, who knows all the issues, who has all the data, has all the statistics, I'm not going to sit there and debate that person, okay? Because number one, it's exhausting. And number two, I really don't care that much. Now, if you want to talk to me about something that I do care about, then we can debate all day long. And so for me, I think that Cardi should have just ignored Candace Owens because when you give these people an audience, that's when they go into overdrive and go into overkill. So guys, let me know, did you watch the, um, not watch, yeah, watch the videos. Did you watch the Cardi B and Joe Biden interview? Did you watch the Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro interview? And did you follow the debate that was going back and forth on social media last night? Um, you know, what were your thoughts? Are you team Cardi? Are you team Candace? Do you think that Cardi should have engaged with Candace or should she have let it go? Because personally, I think it was just a no win situation on Cardi's part. So I have given my thoughts on the beef. Okay, let me know what yours are. Uh, leave your comment below, rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I hope everyone enjoys um, your day off if you have a day off and time with family. And so until the next time, I should talk to you guys later. Bye bye.